Greetings fellow humans, Matt Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from LTC. I've previously reviewed some other LTC units, uh, one of them one of them being one of my favorites, the uh, uh, Nickelback 681. It was a, it's a 65% with a square cluster above the arrows. Um, I just like the layout of it. It was easy to mod and easy to make sound good. Uh, I believe I have at least one or two videos about it. I know one of them, uh, me and another moderator from our budget keeps threw in together to send it as a graduation present for uh, one of the members, uh, the sub, um, he wanted a nice keyboard and he was in a different country where they were a little bit more expensive. So between him and I, we purchased all the parts and I did the modification and shipped it off to him. And I think to this day, he still enjoys it. Do you frog? Anyway, uh, today we're taking a look at a new one from them. It's called the NB104 Pro or 1041 Pro. It is a full size keyboard with a screen and a knob, and I do believe it's also uh, three mode. But like I like to do for a lot of my reviews, I kind of don't read too much about the keyboard at first because I try to have as a few preconceptions about it so that I can go ahead and discover the keyboard along with you guys. So let's go ahead and dive on in and see what LTC has in store for all right, before we get to the keyboard, let's see what we got in the box. It looks like we have a pretty good manual for the MB1041, and it is a three-mode keyboard. And it is a nice, I like the manual. It's nice and big, big letters, easy to understand. You don't have to pull out your magnifying glasses. You do on some of the single pieces of paper folded up. So it looks like, oh yeah, and it looks like the 2.4 dongle actually has the logo on it thank you as <laughs> they all should because uh nowadays if you have more than a couple of uh wireless keyboards you got a bunch of dongles and you don't know what they go to we also have a rubberized usb-c to usb-c cable with an attachment for the c to a attached with a tail which i wish all manufacturers would do that nowadays there's a lot of laptops and even some of the front panels on newer desktops that only have USB-C ports. And if we want to plug in a keyboard, well, then we got to go look for a cable. But if we have one of these, we're good to go, whether it's USB-C or USB-A. So thank you, LTC, for including that. We have your standard wire keycap and switch puller. And we also have four spare switches, which is always appreciated. You never know what could go wrong with a switch and having a spare instead of having to buy a whole nother pack really does come in handy. Now, what switches do we have here? All right, so we have some Huano red switches. That's what comes preloaded with this board. Unfortunately, they are not lubricated. At least the spare ones aren't, but usually if the spare ones aren't, that means the one on the board isn't going to be either. And here we are with the LTC Nimbleback 1041. This is probably the heaviest plastic keyboard I've held to date. This is one the solid Mamma Jamma. Um, and I am excluding old school, like 90s IBM keyboards I'm talking about in the recent uh, decade. So taking a quick look at it, we do have a screen. We have a uh, what feels like an aluminum knurled knob. There, does seem to be a, a film screen protector over that. Uh, I'm glad they do that. Uh, I always, when I take those off, I will replace it with a cutout of a film screen protector for, say, a smartphone. Um, the keycaps appear to be an SA profile, which I love. It's, it looks like a mix of white on black and black on white, or almost like Rome, but without any of the red. red. Um, Yeah, unfortunately, because the switches are not lubed and and because of the steel plate, I, I, why are manufacturers still putting steel plates on keyboards? I mean, I I don't understand. Honestly, I'm I'm kind of baffled at that, um, especially for the asking price. Um, a steel plate usually 
if not always, means it's a tray mount, which means no flex whatsoever. Now, I don't like to type on a trampoline, but I do like something that is at least a little bit soft and that's going to give a little bit of way to my hands when I'm typing, especially when I'm furiously coding away because this becomes harsh after a while. And I mean, it's been, because I used tray mounted boards for the longest time, then I started using gasket mounted. And then any time that I switch back to a tray mounted steel plate, I'm reminded of why I do like gasket mount. I don't like it crazy flexy uh, because I feel like I'm on a trampoline, but that softness makes it a lot easier to type on type for a lot longer without getting so fatigued. So the fact that manufacturers continue to put out tray mounted steel plated keyboards is truly beyond me. I I I just don't get it. I don't get it. And it really just needs to stop. Honestly. Um, it's, I, I mean, on a lot of other things, this keyboard is doing some okay things. I mean, red on lube switches, Juanos. I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but Juano can be bought for probably four cents a switch in bulk of, in bulk. I say like 4,000 switches or more. Juanos are, are some of the cheaper. They're actually cheaper than, Otomu um, OEM switches now. So, because Otomu has improved their processes a lot. But a Huano Red, it's literally four cents a switch, and probably even less at the quantities that they're probably buying it at. Um, now, I know Huano offers dry film switches. Now, they aren't perfect, but at least they're not going to ping like a doorbell. But you add this unlubed switch with this steel plate. It's just, it's a doorbell. It, it really is a bell, just a ringing. Now, we do have south facing, which I can appreciate, though we're not dealing with cherry keycaps. Newer switches are, have either had updated molding, so they don't have any interference, or they're long stem, and they're not going to have any interference with cherry. So, well, I mean, I, like I said, I appreciate south face. It's like, why did you do south face, but ignore all the rest? Because South Face is one of those things that a lot of enthusiasts look for, South Facing. But also aluminum, brass, PC, palm, FR4, any number of materials for the plate besides steel. So I'm going to guess that steel is the majority of the weight in this keyboard. Now, <clears throat> here's another thing. That's, uh, that's just supposed to be there, magnetic. There's no pocket for it. It's just there. And I mean, it is on there pretty good, but I could see that. I could see this just getting loose because it's not in a pocket. It's just there. And I don't know. I mean, it's a plastic keyboard. There's no reason why they couldn't have made a, a pocket underneath the feet, the foot, put it in straight in. I mean, many different ways. Hack, put it in the back on a really, really tall back. But having it there and also having the switch on the bottom, again, it's something that I'm not the biggest fan of. Also, I can't say I'm a fan of this because I'm going to have a lot of cables that are going to have trouble getting in here. And if I need to unplug quickly, I can't do it. Now, I, don't, I know well, there are some people that like to route their cables underneath their keyboards, but this, in my opinion, just, I don't know. This is the way it was done, and I don't think it should still continue to be done, but that's just my opinion. And I mean, because you can barely get your hands in there to pull the cable out. It's like I'm going to dam. I feel like I'm going to damage the port. Feel like I'm going to damage the port just trying to just unplug it. So it's just not, I don't find that well designed. I've, I've seen, you know, boards like that, but usually they're older boards. I don't see many boards nowadays doing this style because it's just outdated. Um, and we want, you know, daughter boards with ports either in the middle or on the side. And that's just the best way to do it. Now, 
I don't see any screws here, but uh, well, the uh, cable for the screen really doesn't give me much play. And the plate is screwed down into the base of the, yeah, the plate screwed down into the bottom case. So, and that really, really fragile looking cable is not one I want to go ahead and mess with. So, uh, they have their logo on the screen that comes up, and then there's a battery. There's the time. Time is off, but I'm going to guess that, that gets set once uh, I plug it in. It does seem to have some OK RGB. Let's see what we have for stabilizers here. Well, they're plate mounted and they're actually quite well plate mounted and they're definitely lubricated. Don't sound as bad as you would think they would, but guarantee you they'd sound much better on a non-steel tray mounted plate all right the pcb does not appear to have any support for screw and stabilizer so we're stuck with that though we do seem to have an ix pe sheet oh actually that feels more like a rubber silicone to tell you the truth that's not ixp that's that's like a rubber silicone and then I do feel like a silicone between the plate and the PCB. For a steel plate, it has pretty good tolerances. Now the keycaps, they are they're not even top double shot. This is like bare minimum double shot. I mean, it's like uh, like little puddles in there. But at least the base key does seem to be on the thicker side. Yeah, 1.5. So, they're kind of like die sub, but they are double shot. So, and I'm going to guess that they're PBT. They do feel like PBT. And again, they are SA, which I really like SA keycaps. I mean, that's my preference, honestly. Um, well, SA, MT3. Uh, I, like, I like them tall and I like them sculpted. But that's about... Off the bat, honestly, that's about the only thing that I'm like, yay, about this keyboard. Um, the weight, I'm not sure what, why it weighs so much. I mean, it, obviously, it's got a large steel plate in there. But again, I just don't understand why in 2024, manufacturers are still releasing tray-mounted plates. Now, I, I've got love for full-size keyboards. I know that some people just live by them, and that's fine. And I mean does not sound that bad with lubing these switches or putting in some switches that were lubed would make a ton of a difference as far as sound goes but it's never going to improve on the fact that it's got a harsh bottom out regardless because it's a steel plate and they're just in my opinion there just isn't a place for steel plates anymore all right let me plug it in real quick here that actually stays on and hopefully I don't damage my cable see this is just this is not a, a way to do things anymore in, in my opinion anyway it's just so yeah that cable routing I don't know that's just not my idea of fun um, as far as the screen goes it looks like if we press and hold though I don't see any indicator oh it doesn't switch. I thought it would. All right, so we can control the backlight mode. Rainbow. I'm gonna put it on static. We can control the color. The rainbow. Control the brightness. Control the speed. We should have temperature and CPU there, but I'm not connected to a Windows machine. We'll check the software out in a second. 
We've, we can switch from Windows to Mac here. We can change the language. We can actually um, control the sleep time and the brightness of the screen, which is always nice. And that appears to be about it, but there doesn't seem to be a way to put it into volume mode. Oh, okay. It's function click to go into the menu system and fun click function click again to go into volume. All right. Easy enough. I want to like this keyboard. And if it was a heck, even an aluminum plate, a brass plate, you know, and was sandwich mounted. So, you know, not flexy, but at least it has a little bit of give. I would be. I would be on the whole other side, on the whole other side of the fence, because this is a nicely built full-size keyboard, especially with the knob and the screen. You've got all the functionality plus some, all the functionality of a full-size in case you don't want to go remapping, and you've got volume control, control of the, the effects without having to remember the, the key combinations. You've got your clock just sitting right there. If you you know, you're working on something just easier than looking at your watch or pulling out your phone. But having the construction of a keyboard that is just, I don't, it, we shouldn't be dealing with steel plates anymore, especially at this price. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the LTC Nimbleback 1041 Pro. A three mode full size keyboard with a knob and customizable screen. It comes preloaded with stock Huano red switches and PBT top double shot SA profile keycaps in a black on white, white on black mix. It is also loaded with a 3000 milliamp hour battery and comes weighing in at 1,660 grams with a tray-mounted steel plate. It has web-based configuration software, which is only Windows and Mac compatible. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters, while the back sits at 31, providing for a default typing angle of six degrees. Raising the middle set of feet We'll take the back up to 36 millimeter and change your typing angle to nine degrees. With the final set of flip out feet, the back will raise to 43 millimeters and your angle of typing will be 11 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $129.99 on LTC's website. All right, so first the software. I downloaded the package, it's a zip file. It is a... um. The first thing that it asks you to do is to run a firmware update. Now, the way they, they have the file set up can be kind of confusing, but if you just stop and look at it, one says, read this first, and it tells you to run the executable file that's in there. And it runs, runs took, take, took a little longer than most firmware updates, but I think it did it twice, maybe just to make sure. But one of the things that really caught me was the fact that it had a link to a website on the bottom, qmk.top. Now this qmk.top, qmk stands for quantum mechanical kit. Most of you guys that know what qmk is will know that qmk stands for quantum mechanical keyboard. They say they have a copyright on this since 2023, but it requires an app to be running on the actual computer and it only has it for Mac and Windows. And yes, I tried Wine on Linux and it wouldn't run. Um, and I wasn't about to fire up my old Mac Pro uh, just to test it out. But um, it is it is very slow, sluggish. Uh, it took the longest time of any to upload an image uh, to the screen. Um, it literally almost took like five minutes. Uh, and I've loaded this image onto other screens and it's been under a minute. So uh, another thing with the screen, I mean, I have a pretty good animation on there, but unless you're right up close to it, there's like hardly any contrast. 
because if there's any light in the room, it has a very weak backlight. And especially at the angle that I'm at, that most people would be sitting at and typing at it, it looks like it's off. So I find the screen on other keyboards with screens to be much brighter. Um, now I know this has a, let me switch it over and see if I'm changing the brightness of the screen. Let me see. Screen, bright. Oh, okay. That is, does seem to make a difference. Let me see how I get back to. All right. That, that did make a bit of a difference. I can see a little bit more, but still at this angle, you can't see much. So the brightness of the screen, for some reason, maybe because of the firmware update, had gone down. But it's still, it's not very bright. There's not enough um, contrast in the screen to really get a good picture of it. So, but especially at this angle, I mean, maybe if I kick up the final set of feet. Oh, yeah, if I kick up the feet, then it doesn't have very good side view and angles. I like the one on the Key Duos uh, NJ98 because the screen is actually at an angle. So you can see it just fine. Um, this is a chonky boy. Uh... And like I said, it, I just, I don't know. I don't get why it's got steel plates. And one thing that I noticed, I did map some functions and they didn't seem to stick. So uh, I don't, uh, it, it, it appears that maybe it needs the software, even though it's web-based. I don't know. It's really, I don't know what they're trying to do because the whole point of it being web-based is that you can get on any operating system and use it. Not that you need an executable on your computer. I mean, it's like, it's almost as if the software or whoever's developing wants more access to your computer. So it, I, I'll, I will be deleting everything that it installed um, because I, I don't like it. I didn't find any viruses around it or anything, but I just, it's, why do it this way? Why make a web-based interface if it doesn't work with Linux and you need to have an executable on the computer, just leave it as an executable. And and the fact that even the function layers aren't really function layers. It has different layers on the main one and then it has function layers, but the ones I map, they don't work. So I, I really have no understanding of what the software is supposed to, to do. Um, I mean, yes, you can do some per key RGB, and like I said, you could upload the image, but it takes a long time. I'm trying to be even-handed with reviews, but I just have a hard time justifying this. And then I see the price, $129, $130, $130. We've got unlubed switches. We've got a tray-mounted steel plate. Are you kidding me? Here's a MKC-75. Um, much better keyboard. Yeah, it's not a full size, but this one was just a little bit more than what that one's selling for. The Zoom 75, which can have a screen right there, just slightly more than this one. Monsgeek M3W, an aluminum keyboard, three mode. Yes, it's a TKL, but same price as this one. Gasket mounted PC plate. Monsgeek M1. $99. Bare bone, yes, but gasket mounted PC plate, great aluminum keyboard. I mean, I feel like I could keep doing this. I, I can't think. I mean, even the NJ98 is $89. And, you know, it's not a full size, but it basically is. It's, it's, it's a 98%. It's as close to a full size. It's just like an 1800. You basically have all the keys. Um, and that one also has a screen and a knob. And it comes with an aluminum plate. It comes with lubed switches. It, it's just, I, I just don't get it. I, I'm like I said, I'm trying to be even-handed, and I'm looking for the good. But I mean, from everything of the construction, the basic construction, with the way that the port is at the bottom, with the way that the the dongle is just kind of just left to just be there um to the stock switches that are very pingy to the screen that doesn't have very good contrast 
to the questionable web-based software that's using QMK. That it, to me that that feels like a clear violation of QMK's GPL. And to be quite honest, I'm going to forward this to them in case they've never seen this because this it just doesn't seem right. I mean, they're I think uh, their entire intention is to be able to say, "Hey, we have QMK keyboards," so they can lie and cheat people to buy keyboards that they think are QMK based when it's just their QMK. Oh, it's Quantum Mechanical Kit, not Quantum Keyboard Kit. I mean, that's it. Just it's shady. It it is. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I will probably lose out on the ability to um, review any LTC keyboards moving forward. But honestly, I if this is the kind of company that they're going to be, I don't care to review their products anymore. I, I just, I can't, it, it, it's very underhand. Why would you put out a web-based interface? I mean, VIA is the actual interface. QMK is the firmware. But a lot of people don't make that distinction. And you're putting out something as QMK and actually calling it Quantum Mechanical K, kit, keyboard, a lot of people use those interchangeably. I know I do. It seems very disingenuous, very dishonest. And I, I just, I can't agree with it. Plus, on top of that, you're selling a keyboard with an outdated design by at least two years for $130 with stock switches, some, you know, I mean, okay PVT keycaps because it's got a screen and a knob. Why is this keyboard worth $130? I mean, I just, it, it's, it's a plastic case. It has no gasket mounts. It doesn't have any lubed switches. It doesn't have any extra keys. I mean, there's just so many reasons why this keyboard should not command more than $59 maybe at that. I, I just, I mean, honestly, half the price, okay. Decent keyboard. It's got a screen and enough. It's got a tray mount, but I mean, you could do a little dampening. You're not going to soften it up, but I mean, you could improve the sound. But at this price for this feature set, and then throw in there the QMK ugliness, I, I just I can't recommend this. And um, I don't know. I almost want to go wash my hands now. It, it, it's honestly the it, this has bothered me the most in a long time as far as a keyboard goes because, I don't know, because of the reasons I listed. I'm, not, I'm just not going to continue to go over it. Anyway, I, I don't know if I'll be coming back to this keyboard to mod it. Um, I don't know if I want to even keep this keyboard. I may just give it away to the Goodwill. Um, but... I hate to live, leave it on a sour note like that, but I can't help but be honest. I just, I don't, I don't understand and I cannot recommend this keyboard at all. I'm going to go ahead and leave you with a sound test of this, this keyboard stock uh, because that's my, that's my system. But I don't know. What are your comments? What are your thoughts? What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree with me? Do you think I'm being too harsh? Because I am trying to be even. I really, really am. So I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. Um, it helps me to center myself and you know make sure that I'm not, you know, just being too harsh or being too easy. But this is just how I feel about it. I mean, maybe because I'm a developer and when I see companies taking advantage of especially open source projects that have been toiled and worked on by developers that don't get paid anything and sometimes just all they get is mud thrown at them because you know people want this and want that and it's like hey this is not a product you're even paying for so please be patient but for a company to take advantage of that and kind of use that in order to sell keyboards it just it feels dirty to me anyway i i do hope you enjoyed this video uh thumbs up a subscribe really goes a long way until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.